What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is patch note day. It's official patch notes. We can show it on the screen. It's fantastic, right? It's fantastic. So there has been some changes and I'm going to say now there's some really, really, really good changes here. There's also been a rework, which I know a lot of you are talking about with uh, Lukea and we're going to go over that as well. But first we're going to go through the patch notes and uh, what's changing because I'm really excited about some of these. So first things first, obviously there's a patch and it will be on the February 9th, which is tomorrow. Um, the event specified here are up is debuff. We have covered this, but let's go over it a little bit now in case no one watched that video on who I suggested about pulling and if it's worth pulling. Uh, yes, this is worth pulling. It's going to be combined with the double legend hero. So, you know, if you don't have any of these heroes, leave it on. Don't turn this off because Gilliman, Elena, Space and Maeve are absolutely huge absolute huge heroes Luz does need some exclusives to be huge but he can be very good as well but your target here I know you can't select any of them but your target here is Gilliman Space Elena and then Maeve Maeve just needs one exclusive to be fantastic for our dungeon bosses uh, well, I say dungeon bosses I mean more like Tower of Mark Green uh, Guild boss she's also huge the reason why she's so good at exclusive one is because she no longer needs affect it to land that defense down too uh, space is great with every single exclusive she gets you want to have her at exclusive five okay just because the faster she is the better she is exclusive three she increases turn meter instead of 20 percent to 30 percent um she increases her healing on the second exclusive and her first exclusive she's dealing extra damage and also producing a bit more turn meter as well which is massive every single one is good elena gets fantastic she is so good she is so good pvp uh dungeons tower of mark um Elemental City even with the speed down on the enemies as well. Uh, that can be huge. So, you know, she is another fantastic hero. Uh, Gilliman is just insane. Buff strip complete. Uh, AoE speed down and then she nukes. She nukes and that is so unique. She is a solid, solid hero. Gilliman will help you hugely in Blue Mark Tower and I mean hugely okay she is just that good there's no one else in Blue Mark who does anything similar to her yeah okay you may find buff strippers but you will not find the likes of the speed down in the way that Gilliman provides it as well especially um the epic heroes up are Basidan, Lomaz, Sidora and Longbeard your targets here are Basidan and Lomaz once again I say targets it's all RNG so I apologize it's not really a target it's who you want it's who you want uh, the Double Legend event is available for a limited time. Yes, we are aware of that. You can only do that once. You don't get that again for those of you who don't know. The, Valenti uh, the Valentine sign-in event is available for a limited time from February 13th to 19th. Sign in for three days to get a bottle of Regression Potion and a Valentine exclusive avatar. I see what they did there. I see what they did there. I see what they did. However, Valentine is rubbish. I'm hoping they don't give him away for free. And if they do, you better way rework him. If you... If Valentine is going to be the, the feature of Valentine's for us, I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm concerned. And you should all be concerned as well. Feature adjustments. Now, this is the big ones, okay? This is really, really... This is great. Added allow operations by guild officials feature to the guild arena during the battle phase guild officials can complete guild war battles for members who allow it how annoying is it when that one person does not attack in guild arena worry no more fret no more we have an answer we can now do their battles for them um it may even be fun for say me to, to do a video on me using everyone's battles um, in, in the Guild War, alright? Maybe we'll do a stream on that, where I just use everyone's teams. <laughs> oh, I just do all their battles in, in, in a stream. That would be a bit, a bit of fun content. Uh, number two, optimize the friend request uh, rules. The friend requirements of one adventurer are now no longer implemented when the other adventurer passes the friend request sent by the former. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what that means. Let's read it again. Optimize the friend request rules. The friend requirements of one adventurer are now no longer implemented when other adventurer... Okay. So basically, if that person's added you as a friend and your requirement is like 1.8 million or something crazy, um, it won't affect the person that you've added. So they'll be able to accept it. Because before you were trying to accept it and it would say you are not strong enough. But this person's tried to add you as a friend. So, oh, sorry. Sorry, you can't... Yeah. Okay. Luke Haya, skill adjustments. And 
before I go into this, she is looking solid now. She is looking absolutely fantastic. She was getting, she was getting shadowed by other bleed damage dealers such as Nidroll, Hisaro. But now I'm kind of hopeful that that is no longer the case because the changes, the changes are very good. The changes are very good. They're not huge. But they also are because she only needed a slight rework. They needed to be very careful. And they was very careful at how they implemented this rework onto Lucaea. And I'm very pleased with the change that they've done. I personally don't have Lucaea. Um, I do have people who have her in the guild. And uh, I know that she is now very good. But let's talk about what's changed. The active skill, which is Spirit Blade Fallout. Which, once, just let me check a moment. I believe that this isn't her basic. I believe... This is her first skill, uh, first active skill. One moment. There she is. Okay, so this is her first active skill. Um, it does say active skill, so yeah, it's not a basic attack. I should have just look at that. Okay, Spirit Blade Fallout. Before, it dealt three stages of 150%, 160, 170, 180, and 180 attack damage to a single enemy. The first stage inflicts two layers of bleed for two turns. The second stage dealt 10% more damage, up to 100% for each layer of bleed there was on the target. The third uh, stage is guaranteed to land a crit and deals more damage, up to 100% based on the target's lost health. Well, this is what has been changed to. So as you can see, it's dealing more damage. It deals three stages of 160, 175, 190, 205, 205. It's a fair increase, attack damage to a single enemy. Meanwhile, each stage has a 100% chance, a 100% chance now, uh, to inflict one layer of bleed for two turns. The more layers of bleed the target has, the more extra damage each stage can deal up to, up to 205%. This is a big increase there. That, that's a big increase there. Um, you know, that's a lot of extra damage. Passive skill. Soul gathering. Before, she would gain two fragments of soul, or two pieces of soul fragment, each time she inflicts a kill, and she gains one piece of soul fragment each time she casts an active skill. Every piece of soul fragment increases her leech, speed, and bleed damage by 3%, up to 5% when it's upgraded. And she'll merge the fragments into a soul core when she has five of those fragments, which increases her leech, speed, and bleed damage by 15%, which isn't really a lot, right? That isn't a huge amount. Um, it's nice, but it's not a huge amount. Uh, she'll not gain any more soul fragments after that, uh, and she'll instead she'll act for one turn immediately and reset the cooldowns of all of her active skills, which is nice. Afterwards... She gains two pieces of Soul Fragment, just the same as before. Each time she inflicts a kill and gains one piece of Soul Fragment each time she casts an active skill. So that hasn't changed. Every piece of Fragment increases her Leech, Speed and Bleed damage dealt by 3 to 5% again. Uh, when Lucaire has five pieces of Soul Fragment, she remove all debuffs from self and merge the Fragments into a Soul Core, which increases her Leech, Speed and Bleed damage dealt by 15 to 25 so you know we're at the max there now it was 15 percent before it's gone up by 10 percent that 10 percent increase on that is is considerable it's considerable uh she'll also act for one turn immediately and reset the cooldown to war active skills but let's have a little look at her exclusive free added inflicts one layer of bleed for two turns whenever the last five stages of spirit blade outburst land a crit or there is a 60% chance to inflict one layer of bleed for two turns if no crit is landed. Besides, while Lucaea has the soul core and each time spirit blade outburst lands a crit, additionally triggers the effect of one layer of bleed one time after spirit blade outburst is cast. Let's just have a look at what that means. What has changed from her exclusive free? Because it was, I don't know why I didn't put that on there. It's exactly the same. Wait, okay, right. So what, what have they adjusted here? Inflicts one layer of bleed for two turns. You can't see it on the screen at one moment. Inflicts one layer of bleed for two turns. Whenever the last five stages land a crit, or there is a 60% chance to inflict one layer of bleed if no crit is landed. So, have they just added this? No, it's the same. It's the same. Hang on. For two turns, if no crit is landed. Besides, so this is what they've added. Is that still 60%? Yeah. That, okay, so this part here is what they've added. While Lucaea has a soul core and each time Spirit Blade Outburst lands a crit, additionally triggers the effect of one layer of bleed. Wow, okay. So we can now stack the bleeds, similar to say how Nidroll does it, and that is what is going to cause a ton of damage. So Lucaea at exclusive level 3 
it's now going to be super, super strong. She's going to be super nice. So, like, we, we did that video on all cast yesterday. I'm still going to tell you all cast is the one to go for. Your first mythic hero all day long. Uh, but this is very nice because at E3, at E3, Lucaea is going to become much more useful. So that's something for you to look forward to. Those of you that you know have wanted to see something a bit more from Lucaea, it's here now. She can now do very good damage. And uh, she's no longer being shadowed by Nidrold. I would like to see a comparison between Nidrold and Lucaea though. Maybe I'll try and get that for you, but I still think it's going to be close. I don't know if she's going to beat Nidrold. She quite possibly will, thanks to the damage dealt increase, that kind of thing. We'll see, but it is a very good update, um, especially... We're, we're not going to focus on Lucaea too much, because yes, it's a nice rework. And uh, it's, it's very nice to see her being much more useful now. She's very good. But what I'm really hyped about is this allow operations by guild officials in the guild arena. That is so nice for, for quality of life um, for the entire guild. I'm sure a lot of people will be happy about that because, once again, it is so frustrating when people don't attack. Meaning we can now attack for them and we should all see a little bit more of a competitive side to uh, guild arena. Well, unless you're attacking us, of course. Unless you're attacking us, of course. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that. Um, but people are starting to, people are catching up. It's getting closer now in Guild Wars. Um, but I'll still, we still need to see some kind of new feature. We still need to see some kind of new feature. Some new kind of battle. Like one where we can, one where we can knock out a certain player from, if we defeat them, that they can no longer be attacked again or something like that. You know, like a siege kind of battle like where there's castles and we've got to protect them with certain heroes. And if we take them down, then they are knocked out and then we can progress on to the next tower. That kind of thing. Something more in intuitive. Something more community driven. Community driven. That's what I'm looking for. I want something more community driven where we really feel that we have to plan our attacks. Not just, okay, everyone attack everyone and it's done. I want to see more. I want to see something more for all of us to enjoy with Guild Arena. I would love to see it. I'm sure all of you would love to see it as well. But... It is a good patch update, and I'm very happy with these changes. I know it's not a huge amount, but Lucaea getting a rework is nice. Let's hope we can start to see now some legend reworks coming in. Because, you know, we've had two mythic reworks now. Are we going to start to see some legend reworks coming in within this this month? Maybe after Valentine's, I would say. I would love to see that. Maybe maybe we're looking early March for some, some hero reworks. I know we have that new faction coming and that sort of thing. So that's also very good on a dev feedback. I don't know when that is exactly. But on that note, I'm going to leave you with it. Um, I hope those of you that have Lucaea and was looking to, you know, waiting for this rework on her are happy with it. Uh, let me know your thoughts on Lucaea. She is going to be very good. But how good? Well, that's yet to be proven. That's yet to be proven. So until then, I don't want to try and misguide you. But she is going to be way up there in the tier now. At exclusive free. At exclusive free. So everyone have a great day or evening, wherever you are. And take care. Bye-bye.